Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined at the Buck Institute by Dr. Eric Verdin. Good afternoon. How are you? Very good. How are you? Oh, yeah, really good. And it's a pleasure to be here and talking about uh, NMN today. So NMN, of course, is one of those very famous uh, precursors to, uh, to NAD+. Um, what are your thoughts in terms of its efficacy and, and why this really should be the NAD plus precursor of choice? Um, I, I think it's interesting to go back to the biology and try to understand, you know, why is it a direct precursor? It turns out that uh, NAD, which is a, an energy shuttler in the cell, um, gets constantly used and depleted. And there's something called the salvage pathway, which is a, a series of biochemical steps that takes the byproducts of, of NAD and recycles it into NAD itself. And in that pathway, there's three steps. It turns out that NMN is the step just before going to NAD. So the idea, once you've depleted your NAD, you can actually refill the, the channel that leads to new NAD synthesis by, uh, via NMN. Right. And in relation to NAD+, plus, obviously it tails off as you get older. Is there an optimal time, do you think, Eric, in terms of when you should start taking your NMN uh, supplementation in your life? The honest answer is that we don't know. Uh, clearly, if you are under 45, I, I do not see much sense in supplementing with NMN. Uh, we know in, in humans and in animal models, uh, NAD levels decrease during aging, but they might be decreasing at different rates in different people, that's right. number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, they might be decreasing in different organs and different tissues at different rates. Um, and we don't have access to these tissues in humans to measure. We can do this in, in animal models. We can analyze liver, brain, and so on. So I, I would say uh, it, it seems to me that everyone above 50 should consider taking it as, as, and, and potentially benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Not what those, it is really, that's another unanswered question. Yeah. We've, we've learned a lot about NAD and NMN supplementation in animal models. The reason why there's so much excitement in the field is that the data is compelling. Uh, it has really a, a protective effect. Um, but uh, in humans, we're still at, in baby steps. We're mm -hmm. starting. You can buy it. You can take it. And I, my recommendation would be to, to buy it and take it at the recommended dosage and wait for the science to emerge. Uh, one thing that we can reasonably predict is that it's not going to be toxic at the current dose, that, which it has recommended. But it might be that we might need to take more. Some other people under some conditions might be needing more. Mm -hmm. So early days. Yeah, early days. How about yourself, Eric? Do you take NMN? Yeah, I do take it. Okay, yes. that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, some of the evidence that sits behind uh, all of this. Now, we, we do know, of course, that there's a lot of call for evidence in the sector now. Um, and we have seen that companies like Elevant that are really pushing forward in terms of doing their studies. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on studies as we stand as, as a sector at the moment? It, it's a really critical question because if, if, if we think about the goal of this field, longevity science, is actually to make people live better longer. This is our motto here at the Buck Institute. Um, they are First, there are safety issues. You know, when you give a molecule that has biological potential, you can always be concerned that you're going to have not, not a beneficial effect, but actually a deleterious effect. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that I, as a physician is always on my mind. First, do no harm. You yeah. know, we're talking about enhancing life, not actually making someone sick. So the traditional way that this, has, this question has been addressed by the pharma world, which generates the drugs that we all benefit from, is by conducting rigorous clinical trials. The problem is that the infrastructure to conduct these trials uh, is extremely expensive. You know, people have talked about a billion dollar to develop a drug to put wow. it on the market. Yeah. Uh, no one is going to spend a billion dollar uh, developing NMN, you know, for supplementing NAD. So how do we find an alternative model? Uh, and this is where a lot of people actually are exploring different manners in which uh, we could conduct, for, for example, maybe smaller clinical trials. Uh, or trials that are more focused. One of the problem, additional problems in longevity science is the idea that our, our final readout is life, lifespan and health span. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are hard things to measure. We're developing the tools to, you know, to measure the rate of aging and so on, but again, these are 
we're early days in the developing all these tools. So the field right now is grappling in terms of trying to find the best way to conduct rigorous science. That is, you know, ideally, we will sell supplements that have demonstrated efficacy. So if you're spending 50 or $70 a month on, 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 on a supplement, you can actually be guaranteed that most likely you will benefit from it. So that, that's where we are. Uh, early days, uh, there are some things that you know, all of us can do to sort of, while we are waiting for the definitive, an definitive answers to, to mitigate our, the rate of it, our aging, and supplement could be part of this, but I always bring up the fact that, you know, lifestyle factors, uh, you know, that we all know about should be your first line of, 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 of focus. In diet terms exercises. Of, oh, exa diet, diet exercise, exercise, sleep, stress mitigation, and so on. Yeah. And, and so it, sometimes, you know, I find it a little par paradoxical. People will tell me, people that I know who don't exercise, don't eat well, don't do anything in terms of maximizing their health span, actually are considering taking a supplement. And I, my answer is always, you know, first things first. Yeah. And uh, the supplement can certainly help in some case, we hope, and uh, to be determined in the future. So Eric, let's talk about the difference between uh, Elevance, NMNC, and other NMNs on the, on the marketplace. What's, what do you see as the difference between those? Uh, I think one of the... Uh, the virtues or the unique qualities of an MNC is that it is a fully synthetic uh, product. So there are, uh, if you look at the way the other NMN uh, products are, are being synthesized, involves a, a bacterial product, which can actually, uh, which we know can be carried into the preparation of NMN. So in terms of purity, uh, I would say that the NMNC is actually the, the highest level of purity today on the market. Mm -hmm. And is that the one that you take yourself? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, right, great. Well, obviously, Eric, we could talk at great length about where we are uh, with the supplements industry and outcomes and, uh, and the way we all personally supplement, but it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Thanks very much. Likewise, thank you.